the articulator that we use in uh, the clinic at SDS. This is an example of a semi adjustable articulator of the Arcon design. As uh, most of you are well aware, articulators are of several types. You have the non adjustable type of articulators. Uh, an example would be a standard mean value articulator which is used uh, in the undergraduate level where all the uh, values are averaged. You also have the semi adjustable category and the fully adjustable category. This Stratos 300 by Ivoclar is a very sturdy uh, articulator and this is an example of an Archon type of articulator. What you generally mean by Archon is uh, an articulator, the AR in Archon stands for articulator and the CON stands for condyle. The lower member of the articulator which is the pillar that you see in yellow houses the condylar element which is visible there and the upper member of the articulator houses the condylar housing or the uh, glenoid fossa apparatus. So this mimics the human temporomandibular joint where the condyle is in the lower member and the condylar support apparatus is in the upper member. A non-archon articulator would be where the condyle is in the upper member and the condylar apparatus or the housing apparatus is in the lower member. There are proponents for uh, both kinds of articulators but in general the Archon semi adjustables are the most widely used variety of articulators in the world today. Now whenever it comes to using a semi adjustable articulator most of my students are always anxious about all the various readings that they see on these articulators and they are never able to be confident or truly understand what all these readings are actually denoting. So today's video is basically to de jargonize semi adjustable articulators and to explain the basic parts and features and the meanings of all the values which are printed or present on this articulator. The articulator basically has a lower member and an upper member which is connected with the help of an elastic rubber band. This elastic rubber band can be disengaged and the entire upper member can be disarticulated from the lower member for servicing and cleaning and it can be reattached once again. These round metal uh, rings that you see are the points of attachment for the phase bow to the articulator in a direct model transfer where the phase bow is brought to the articulator. When you come to the front, this is the incisal uh, support, this is the incisal support, this is the incisal pin and this is the incisal table. The incisal tables are again of various types in semi adjustable articulators. This is as you can see a flat incisal table. You also have incisal tables available in various angulations. This is a 15 degree angulated incisal table and this is a 30 degree incisal table. So what these incisal tables basically do is they help to move the incisal rod at a specified angulation mimicking the movement of the lower incisors on the singulum plate of the maxillary incisors. So whatever angulation you have on your teeth, when your teeth are coming out of centric and the mandible is coming forwards, that angulation can be replicated by using angulated incisal stops <coughs> or incisal plates. You also have the incisal uh, pin which has all these millimetric markings as you see. The midpoint or the 5 millimeter marking is marked in red. So that is where you generally set the incisal guide initially. You set it at the center and whenever you want to increase or decrease the vertical height, you can easily know how many millimeters you have increased by just moving the pin higher. So every new mark denotes one millimeter of vertical opening. So you can increase it by about five or six mm easily. Got five mm here, 
and you've got 5 mm here. So whenever you want to increase the vertical component or the vertical dimensions, you can be very very precise. And since you have used a phase bow to mount your models, whenever you increase the vertical opening on a semi-adjustable articulator, you can rest assured that the arc of closure of the mandible remains exactly the same with a change in vertical dimension, which is unlike the case when you use a hinge articulator or a mean value articulator, because the quantum of vertical opening is not clearly determined. And also the maxilla or the maxillary model is not related to the facial planes or the uh, facial skeleton. So the arc of closure in those kind of articulators is arbitrary and will lead to a lot of error when the vertical dimensions are changed. At the back of the articulator, you also have this inclined support which can be removed. At the back of the articulator, you have the inclined support where the articulator can be inclined at almost 45 degrees and the various aspects of the dentition can clearly be visualized without straining the operator's hands. So, a different perspective of the occlusion and possible interferences in movement can be determined by using the inclined support holder. When the articulator is reversed for mounting the mandibular cast, the inclined support holder can easily be removed. Coming to the markings or measurements seen on the semi-adjustable articulator, the measurement that you see in the front from 0 degrees to 60 degrees is the protrusive condyla path or that this is also known as the angle that the condyle makes when it is coming out of the glenoid fossa. So you can have an average protrusive path of say around 30 degrees or you can reduce it and make it completely flat at 0 degrees or you can have a very steep protrusive path where you can set it even up to 60 degrees. At the moment when you use the articulator you will notice that the articulator is very rigid and no kind of anterior, posterior or lateral movements are accepted. This is what you generally see in a mean value articulator. But a semi-adjustable articulator means the mandibular movements can be replicated like what is actually present in a patient's mouth in this particular articulator. So when you turn the articulator, these two large knobs that are visible here are known as the centric fixation knobs. Whenever these knobs are tight, it means that the articulator cannot be moved in any direction, laterally, anteriorly or posteriorly. Once the knobs are loosened, you can unlock the centric and now you will notice that the articulator can slowly be moved depending on which knob is being adjusted. So this upper position indicates centric fixation of centric lock, the lower position indicates centric free which means that the articulator is now ready to accept mandibular movements. movements. Coming to the condylar protrusive path, once the screws are loosened, you can see that on movement, you can see that the condyle when it is sliding out of the clenoid fossa is coming out at an absolutely flat angle when you visualize the movement here. This is where you visualize that is the condyle, that is the condylar element and that is the condylar housing. So when the articulator is moving, you can see that it is moving in a very flat path. When I increase the condylar protrusive angulation from 0 to 60 and lock it on both sides and now try and move the articulator, you will notice immediately that the condylar 
path of movement is now extremely steep as compared to when it was set at 0 degrees. So the path of protrusion of the condyle can be set from 0 to 60 by the anterior measurement that you see here. This is known as the setting for the anterior protrusive path of the mandible. These readings that you see here from 0 degrees to 15 degrees to 30 degrees indicate the Bennett angle. Now the Bennett angle is the angle that the condyle makes as compared to when the condyle was in centric relation during movement. So the angulation between the condyle when the condyle is in centric to when the condyle moves or rotates downwards and forwards that angle or that lateral angulation is known as the Bennett angle which can be set from 0 to 30 degrees. Now if you look at the angle you will notice that if you loosen these screws at the back you can set your Bennett angle from 0 to 30 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to 30 now let's see what happens when it's set at 0 when it's set at 0 you can see that there is hardly any lateral movement when it's set at 30 you will see the angulation that the condyle, condyle makes with the eminence you can see the angulation changing you can see that here set the Bennett at 30 and lock it So you see that there is a huge difference in angulation which means that if that is the original point of the condyle in centric relation the new position of the condyle head or the condyle head is somewhere here so that is the angulation that is almost a 30 degree angulation between the new condyle position and the original condyle position. So the desired Bennett angle can be set in the articulator from 0 to 30. The next measurement that you see here is the amount of protrusion possible for the condyles. Now each individual condyle can be protruded forwards like how you are trying to replicate anterior guidance by getting the mandible or the getting the condyles forward. So you have different measurements from minus 2 to 0 to plus 2 to plus 4. You can see that the position of the condyle can be moved anteriorly or posteriorly by this nut here you can see very clearly the condyle is coming back it's going retrusively if you want to get the condyle forwards this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 close to 6 millimeters you will now see that the condyle is now being held very much away from the original position. So the anterior protrusion of the condyle or the condylar protrusion or the condylar protrusive path can be set with this particular adjustment. The last measurement is the ISS measurement. ISS stands for immediate side shift. You all of you know what immediate side shift is immediate side shift is the amount of lateral slide of the mandible that is possible when your teeth are in maximum intercuspation before the guiding cusps of your upper teeth start sliding on the fossae of your mandibular teeth. <coughs> so that immediate side shift can be set from that is the marking there. On the, you can see you can set the immediate side shift from 0 
you can go up to 1.5 that's now set at 1.5 if you want you can make it up to 0 so the degree of side shift which is desired now it's set in 0 I can bring it up to 1.5 which means that that much of side shift is possible in the articulate. So you have set the side shift, you have set the anterior protrusive path of the mandible, you have set the protrusion angle and you have specified the degree of the Bennett angle. The incisal table and the incisal movements in anterior guidance can also be set for every patient specifically. So by uh, creating the anterior guidance in acrylic on a flat incisal plate. So what you have to do here is, once you add cold cure acrylic onto this plate and you have recorded the bite in anterior uh, positioning or in anterior guidance in the patient's mouth, place that bite on the maxillary model, mount the mandibular model and recreate the guidance by moving the articulator front and back and laterally to get the guidance. <coughs> Anterior guidance and lateral guidance can be pre-customized for all patients which means that if you have a patient who has got a dentition where you want to look at how his teeth move in centric relation. Once you mount the models in centric relation and you customize the guidance based on the wax bites that he's given you, you can actually move his lower jaw in exactly the same position that it's going to move in his mouth and visualize what happens to the teeth in anterior protrusion and lateral excursion. And once you have a clear visualization of what happens, then correction for all those particular occlusal defects or problems can be planned. So once the movements are determined, you can again lock your centric and whatever movements you have fixed in your articulator, the articulator now is locked. So these are some of the key features of a semi-adjustable articulator and for a person who is serious about occlusion, who believes in occlusion and who believes in maintaining a healthy stomatographic apparatus, using such articulators and face bows is an absolute must.